Okay guys, continuing on my quest to redo all the videos I've done as of late uh, due to the fact that they were all erased. We're moving back to the flashlight comparison. Um, we've got three different types of flashlights here. One is a weapon light. The other is more of a, I would say, like a utility light. More like a uh, kind of all trades kind of light, you know, and just stick it in your pocket, you're good to go. And then the other one is more of your higher, higher powered self-defense. This is more of a self-defense uh, flashlight. Now, two of these, I know for a fact, can be mounted to a weapon. Um, I don't know if the LD20 can be. I haven't seen any mounts. But I want to go over some comparisons that are different and why I feel that when it comes to a weapon light, you should get a purposely built weapon light and not a high-powered slash self-defense style flashlight. Why do I call this a self-defense style flashlight? Well, it's got the bezel ring around here that is obviously made for impacting skulls. Does have the high capacity flash? It's you know letting, like a, it's it's a survival light, um, and it can be used for self defense. This is the Phoenix TA twenty one. This is the Phoenix LD twenty, and this is the Surefire M three hundred A Mini Scout. Now, with both of these Phoenixes, you're going to have one hundred eighty watts. And 225 watts. Uh, this is a double double A. This is a CR123. This takes two CR123s. This takes two double A's. This takes one CR123 and it's 110 lumens by Surefire standards. Now Surefire, they basically underestimate their lumens while everybody else seems to overestimate them. This is 180 lumens on turbo which this 110 lumen Surefire is brighter than Okay, so that's one thing you need to understand. Even though this says it's 110 lumens, it is brighter than this LD20. It's not as bright as this 225 TA21. That's just, you know, it's not. The TA21 has a bluer light than this Surefire. The Surefire has a, uh, a more natural light. They're both LEDs though. Uh, all three of them are LEDs. But the Surefire does have the more natural, uh, warmer color than the uh, the other two. Now, let's say you mount this on a we weapon. You get the rings and you mount it. While some people that's, that, that does them just fine and that, that satisfy them, it, it, it doesn't for me. And there's one main reason, and I'll show you that right here. With this, you'll notice that the battery has a lot of room to move around and the battery battery is coming in and out very easily the only thing holding them in place is this cap and this spring so what happens is you basically secure it down and I don't know if you can hear that but that is all the way down You can hear that moving around in there. The LD20. Same thing. The battery moves around in there, and what holds it in place is this spring. Just like all flashlights, right? It's basically a pretty simple standard design. And what I want to do here is I want to show you, even with this one, Still hear your standard rattling. Now, with the Surefire, just to show you that there's a battery in there. There's the battery. But here's the cool trick that battery will not come out. In fact, with that cap off, you can hear a little bit of a rattle. And actually, I'm sorry. That's because the head is loose. Here. Can you hear it? Very little. 
that's basically just the minute little side to side. Because let me show you. There's a very little minute side to side compared to these. And it does need a little a little bit of room because these batteries do expand and contract and everything like that. So it does need that little bit of a room so you don't get a stuck battery. But unlike those other flashlights, where every time, if you were to use them for a weapon light, every time you pull that trigger, those batteries act like a bat battering ram to the back and front of the fla flashlight. And eventually they break. I know that for a fact. This TA-21 was mounted on a weapon for about 500 rounds and it broke. This ring doesn't work anymore. I, it does, doesn't, doesn't change modes. I can t I change it to the mode and then I have to bang it and then it will go to that mode. That only happened after I mounted it on the firearm. This, no matter what kind of firepower you're punching to it, that battery cannot go back and forth. It's locked into place. The only thing it can do is go up and down a little bit because it needs that little breathing room. But it can't go back and forth. There's no way. It's impossible. The body's milled out so the battery just can't do it. The only thing this cap does is basically complete the circuit. I know a lot of people say that Surefires are overpriced and underpowered. Well, the simple fact is that when it comes to a weapon light and I've got a rifle that I'm going to be relying on to save my life or my, my, my go-to-war rifle, whatever you want to call it, bug-out rifle, end-of-the-world rifle, that rifle is going to always have a Surefire on it because unlike other cheap weapon lights, which a lot of them besides the Surefire, even the Streamlights and... Uh, uh, some of the other ones, the, the weapon lights, they don't have that feature where you don't have the battery acting as a little missile in there battling ra battle ram, go, you know, going back and forth, whatever they call it, battling ram? I can't remember what it's called. Um, battering, battering ram, not battling ram. What the hell am I talking about? Um, so that's something to think about. When it comes to a rifle, I mean, yes, this was $89 or whatever it was. This is $49. 50 bucks. This is $241 on sale, regularly $325 or $341, wherever you see it, $350 some places, depending on where you shop. I got this for $241. So, yeah, I could have bought th almost three of these, five of these, but the rifle I'm currently building is basically the last AR I'm ever going to build. Um, and I'm building it specifically for the, for the specific reason to be the end all go to all it's my survival rifle that's another video i'm going to do a video on that as to why i'm doing that but as i was saying guys this is what i always put on there because even though people want to hate on them because they don't understand quality and, and that it costs money for those extra little things i'll always take that over mounting this on my firearm it's just first of all this i mean weighs half of that and it's not half as half as small it's thicker it's got a bigger head on it I mean this is heavy as hell compared to this this weighs nothing it's all quality I think this is 4.3 ounces or 3.4 or something like that just something to think about guys when you're when you're looking at a weapon light I know it's it's fun everybody likes to sit there and go Surefire is shit. Oh yeah, the, look at the new O light or the new Phoenix. It's so awesome. But when it comes to a weapon light, Surefire still is the only one that does it right. I've seen a lot of other imitators out there. I've had a lot of other imitators, and I just I don't use them. I just don't use them anymore. I just stick with Surefire. Uh, never had a problem with Surefire. I'm, I, guys, I'm sure there's somebody out there who says they've, they've had a problem with a Surefire. I'm sure of it. Uh, there's Ferrari owners out there that have had problems with their Ferraris. You know what I'm saying? It's just a matter of quality, mass quality, where the majority of them are of higher standard. Hey, there's nothing wrong with these. I, I still get these. I love these. These are great flashlights. I'll never get rid of them. I'm not mounting them to my rifle, though. That's that, guys. Have a good one.